Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. Today I'm going to be talking about a project I've been working on for a number of weeks now to build a 3D LiDAR scanner using an Arduino, a couple servos, and a Garmin LiDAR Lite V3 to scan an Apollo spacesuit and an Apollo lunar module on display at the Saturn V Center. This allows us to address a claim sometimes heard in Apollo hoax belief stories that the lunar module wasn't large enough and the hatch on it was not wide enough to allow an Apollo spacesuit to actually pass through the hatch. Now to be sure, this is not one of the most popular Apollo hoax theories, but I thought it was interesting because it lends itself to being tested if you have the right equipment. And I thought it would be an interesting project to create that equipment and actually put the theory to the test. The evidence for this theory comes from a variety of sources depending on who you ask. But one of the most popular versions currently repeated online is that the models of the astronauts around the lunar module at the Smithsonian are deliberately scaled smaller than life size to hide the fact that a full-sized human would not fit through the hatch, especially if they were wearing a large spacesuit. And so the claim is that these models were deliberately created for the express purpose of trying to hide the fact that the lunar module's hatch is too small for a full-size astronaut in a spacesuit to fit through the door. I sometimes hear similar claims made about the mannequin depicted as being a technician working on LTA-1, seen in this photo here, taken at the Cradle of Aviation Museum where this lunar module is on display. Once again, the claim is made that the mannequin was deliberately chosen to be smaller than life-size to try to hide the fact that the hatch is too small for a full-size astronaut in a spacesuit to pass through it. Now, for all I know, this mannequin is smaller than life-size. His clothes do look a little bit baggy on him, but that's not really the crux of the issue. The issue is whether the hatch is large enough for a full-size astronaut wearing a spacesuit to actually pass through it. However, it should be pointed out that with LTA-1 and similar early models of the lunar module, the hatch is circular. This is not the final design, and it would not be appropriate to use this as a test to find out if the final design of the spacesuit would be able to pass through it. A similar engineering test article, LTA-3, can be seen on display at the Kansas Cosmosphere, and I've personally seen this particular test article on display. You can get right up close to the hatch and see it for yourself. Now on this one, you can get so close to the hatch that you could theoretically pull out a tape measure and measure it directly yourself. But once again, this is not the final hatch design. This was an early engineering test article. This was never intended to fly, and the design of the hatch was changed before flight. So what options do we have if we actually want to measure a final design of the hatch, preferably on a vehicle that was actually intended for flight and completed? Well, we do have an option, Lunar Module 9. This was one of the original lunar modules intended for flight. You can see it listed here between Apollo 14 and 15. That's because it was originally intended to fly on Apollo 15. However, when the Apollo program was cut short, they moved up the start of the J missions, where they started bringing with them the lunar rover. That required a new design of the lunar module, and so the original lunar module that was intended to fly on Apollo 15 was left on the ground and never flew. Lunar Module 2, on display at the Smithsonian, was only intended for unmanned tests. It was never intended to fly people to the moon. Lunar Module 13 was intended to fly people to the moon, but it was never completed. It's also on display at the Cradle of Aviation Museum. That leaves Lunar Module 9 as the only lunar module that was fully completed and intended to fly people to the moon, but is still here with us on Earth. It's from the original H series of missions, and fortunately, the hatch is open. This makes it a perfect target for a LiDAR 3D scan to find out if a spacesuit from the Apollo program would actually fit through the hatch or not. And that's where my little project comes into play. As I previously mentioned, this is a 3D laser scanner using an Arduino board, a couple servos, and a LiDAR with a 40 meter range. As the servos report their position, the Arduino fires the laser 10 times and averages the result in order to calculate the exact distance and triangulate the X, Y, and Z coordinates of each point. By scanning across multiple positions, you can build up a point cloud, a 3D model of each object, 
and the objects are automatically to scale with each other. No additional processing is necessary for that to happen because it's actually measuring the true distance and sizes of these objects. So I took multiple scans of the lunar module from multiple positions and multiple scans of a spacesuit originally belonging to Gene Cernan from Apollo 17 and combined them to create 3D models of each object. I then imported those models into MeshLab for comparison. So here we are in MeshLab. I've imported the point clouds of both the lunar module and Gene Cernan's spacesuit, and I've inserted Cernan's spacesuit into the hatch, and you can see it fits right through the hatch opening, no problem at all, even at its widest point. If I turn off the spacesuit, you can see where the hatch is, and you can see the spacesuit fits through that space, no problem at all. Hope that clears up that issue. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you want additional details about my build of a LiDAR scanner, please let me know. Uh, it's a rather nifty little device. I did code it myself, including a little program uh, on my tablet for downloading the data straight from the device. Uh, the tablet actually controls and records all data from it over Bluetooth. Works pretty well, and if you want, I can do a separate video about that and show you guys how that build process worked. Thanks for watching, Clear Skies folks.